Hello everyone and uh, welcome to re-entry. Uh, in this video I will be going through the new uh, battery charging uh, procedures uh, that I implemented in uh, patch 09910 um, and uh, I'm going to also showcase some of the features around that and the actual procedures themselves. So uh, before I jump, jump into the actual procedures let's take a quick uh, look in the Apollo handbook for the command module. So I'm using the shift n menu this is like uh, the mission pad, and then you have the Shift M, which is the flight documents. And this is uh, a link to a PDF that uh, downloads once you open it, and you're actually able to open any PDF or actually a website in this uh, flight documentation uh, browser here. It's basically an in-game browser that allows you to reference, you know, the the flight journals or uh, manuals. Uh, in this case, I'm in the Apollo, Apollo Operations Handbook, and uh, I'm going to jump to a specific uh, section here, which is the electrical power system. And if I click this one, I get to the actual chapter. And the one that I'm interested in is, first of all, uh, batteries. So um, the uh, Apollo Command module has three rechargeable entry and post landing batteries, which is battery A, B, and C. Uh, these are responsible for powering the entire command module once the service module has been separated. Uh, this happens right before re-entry, uh, during entry and landing, and then splashdown and post-landing. So the batteries are meant to keep the spacecraft systems in the command module alive once the service module has been jettisoned. Uh, the reason for this is that all the fuel cells that are currently powering the spacecraft is located inside the service module, and once you uh, separate that stage, uh, those are gone. So uh, then we are switching to the battery powered uh, uh, command module basically. So uh, another important thing here is that in this uh, chapter we also have a battery charger and this is what we are going to go through today. So basically the battery charger allows you to recharge the batteries. So the batteries are uh, powering the spacecraft uh, during the mission as well and not only after uh, the service module has been uh, separated for example during ascent or uh, any powered uh, uh, maneuvering or uh, procedures where you need those extra uh, capacity and uh, backup uh, power source so uh, what we're going to go through now is to figure out how the battery charger work so i'm going to close this uh, a little bit and then i'm going to open the checklist and you can see that uh, the battery charging uh, uh, checklist can be found under uh, the command module and then you scroll down into the electrical power, power system and then you find battery charging and uh, this is a runnable checklist so I'm just going to now hit run on this one and basically uh, the most important thing here is that the main bus uh, tie is uh, set to off uh, for the battery that you wish to charge. Uh, battery C requires both of these to be down in the off position because battery C is uh, bound either to a main bus A or main bus B depending on some uh, uh, circuit breakers that I'll get to in a minute. So if you want to charge battery A make sure that uh, the battery A is set to off. If you want to charge battery B you need to make sure that uh, uh, B is set to off and if you want to charge battery C make sure both them are set to off. Uh, we are also going to open up the battery uh, battery relay bus so uh, I'm going to open those two circuit breakers. So the important thing here is that the battery that you wish to charge uh, is uh, basically uh, it needs to be isolated uh, uh, from the systems. So uh, what we're doing here is to decouple the batteries and the battery relay bus from everything. In this setup, if you have uh, both of the main bus ties to off and both of the battery relay uh, bus circuit breakers out, it means that you can basically charge any of the three batteries, A, B or C. So um, if I now go to, um, um, uh, to the checklist it itself, then you can see that uh, both the main bus uh, ties has been set to off. It also references panel 250, and uh, 250 is a little bit hard to find, but if I now dive into the cockpit and all the way down to the floor, you can see panel 250, uh, and it contains uh, uh, a couple of circuit breakers that allows you to connect uh, battery bus A to the pyro bus, those needs to be out. And then you uh, have a couple of circuit breakers that allows you to, for example, connect battery C to bus A and battery C to bus B, uh, etc. 
So everything here is in uh, the correct setup. Uh, pyro uh, A and B, bat bus A and B is open, and then battery C to bat bus A and B is also open. So that's um, uh, battery uh, panel 250. So now I'm going to climb back up to the electrical power uh, panel, uh, and then um, it's uh, basically asking me to. Uh, by the way, uh, panel 250 uh, also uh, needs to be set up correctly. Right now it's set up so any battery could be charged, but if you, if you need a battery to be powering the spacecraft while uh, you are charging another battery, then you need to configure those based on the battery that you are going to be charging. So uh, the next thing that we need to do is to set the battery charger to uh, the DC indicator battery charger. And this will change the behavior of the DC amps and the DC volts. So currently um, uh, the battery charger is set to off. Uh, not, no batteries are yet connected to the battery charger. And in this case I will be, uh, let me just uh, show you this. Uh, if I now go to Batbus A and you can see that uh, the voltage is uh, uh, around 32 uh, and then Batbus B is fully charged uh, battery B uh, which has the voltage of uh, 39.9 or 8 or something like that so this is the one uh, battery that we will need to charge so then let's get back to the battery charger and then I'm going to switch this over to battery A now you can see that uh, it shows the current voltage of battery A on the battery charger on the DC volts and this one will uh, keep increasing as the battery uh, charges. And once this hits uh, around between 37 uh, and 40, that means that the battery is fully charged. So you can see that uh, when the DC vol uh, volts indicator shows 37.5 to 39.5, uh, then we can turn off the battery charger. Uh, the other uh, thing uh, worth checking out is the DC amps. This allows you to see the current amps that uh, is being uh, the batteries are being uh, charged at. So you can see that right now it's about that's about two amps. So if you now take a look at uh, the battery charger section here, and I'm going to scroll down here, you can see that the batteries are being charged uh, basically uh, at this rate here. So it's going to be uh, at around two uh, from 2.2, 2.3 to about 2.7 for most of the recharging cycle and once the uh, voltage of the battery goes uh, to uh, you know uh, this area here uh, 35 and upwards towards 39 uh, you can see that uh, it's rapidly decreasing uh, the battery charge output and once uh, this needle uh, is going to be slowly going here and then rapidly to zero that means that the battery is fully charged. So now I'm going to close the, the pad and uh, then I will be uh, using time scale to uh, quickly charge this. You can see that the diesel volts is increasing and then it's going faster and faster towards zero. And right now the battery uh, is fully charged. That means that uh, uh, I can set the battery charger to off. There we go. And that's how you charge a battery. I can now see that Batbus B is 40 and the same with Batbus A. Uh, both of them is almost 40 uh, PDC. So let's continue with the checklist. We can then uh, connect this uh, again. And then I'm going to switch this to main bus A. And then uh, we are going to go into the system tests. So uh, system test 7A, uh, this shows the, uh, uh, the uh, basically the battery compartment pressure. And this is uh, now uh, going to be quite high uh, because I on purpose wanted to show you this feature as well. Um, this is new. So if I now go to uh, test 7A, you can see that there's a lot of pressure inside of the battery comp compartment. I did not vent the um, battery compartment uh, during post insertion. So that's why this is still at sea level and above. So what I'm going to do now is to go to this panel here all the way back 
you have uh, something called battery vent. And this is something that you will need to set to vent for five seconds during uh, the post insertion procedures. So one, two, three, four, five. Go. Okay. And now if I fly over here, you can see that uh, the uh, uh, system test 7A shows that the pressure in the battery comp compartment is now zero. Uh, one thing that is uh, worth mentioning is that if I now go back to the battery charger, and uh, I'm just going to disconnect these two, and I go in and say that I want to charge battery A, and now I'm going to time scale for a width bit, like that. Uh, then I go back to system test 7A. We can see that it has built up pressure inside of uh, the battery compartment. This is because I've been overcharging the battery. So once the battery uh, indicator and the DC amps for the battery uh, uh, charger uh, shows zero, make sure that you turn off the charging so you don't overcharge the batteries or else you're gonna uh, have the chance of building up that pressure. So right now I'm going to go down here and then uh, vent it again. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. And that's everything there is to charging the batteries. The checklist will basically say that if the system test indicates, uh, indicator shows less than you know, 1.5 BDC, you can press clear. In my case it didn't. And then it basically tells us to vent uh, it for five seconds. And then uh, lastly, we can go in and uh, go into 5B uh, to check the uh, um, uh, battery relay bus voltage. Uh, with that, uh, I want to say thank you for watching and I uh, hope you found this uh, video valuable. And, uh, that you enjoy playing uh, re-entry in this new update. Thanks again.